Hey there, this is Adam Lane from Pocketnow.com, and in this video, we're going to do a quick comparison between Windows Phone 8 and Android 4.1. Let's check it out. Okay, we're going to start with a cold boot. We have the uh, Galaxy Nexus on the left and the Windows Phone 8X on the right. Both of those were held down at the same time. We're booting up. Now both these have uh, dual core processors. This one is 1.5 gigahertz, while this one is 1.2, and both have one gig of RAM. So here we go, booting up. It's taking a little bit of a, a little while here, and we're waiting. Anyway, in this video, as we wait, uh, we're going to talk about the lock screen, uh, you know, the home screen differences, um, probably some game performance, a few similar apps, you know, the web browser, and we'll also take a look at the source. I think the Nexus may have frozen because it really shouldn't be taking that long, so I'm going to cut the video and uh, pull the battery out. Okay, it took a few reboots, but we got uh, Android 4.1 running on the Galaxy Nexus, and here we are at the lock screens. Now you see over here I have a, a CNN app that's loading uh, a picture and a news headline down here. We have the calendar, uh, the day and the time, and we have little notifications of emails or Facebook whatnot. And over here we have a little lock icon, the time, the day, and you have little notifications up here too about emails and Facebook and everything that might be going on. So let's see how customizable these are. So here we are in the lock screen settings on both uh, Android 4.1 and Windows Phone 8, and you see we have all these options for uh, what kind of lock you're going to have on your lock screen. So you can do a pattern unlock, you can do face recognition, you can do pin, uh, password, and over here we can turn password on and then just choose a you know, numeric password. But we have lots of customization options for the background image. Third party apps appear here and each app has its own little options sometimes. We have show artists while playing on the lock screen and we can choose what kind of information appears there as well. Over here we also have uh, just the background image really that we can change. And it uses the same background as uh, the normal operating system. And of course there's all sorts of apps that you can use to install on Android and customize it. We're just going to go over the, the stock Android right now. Now the home screens. There's a significant differences here. On Windows Phone 8 we have a infinitely scrollable start screen where you can arrange all sorts of live tiles and you can make them into three different sizes. A full width, a square, a large square, a small square and they have they can display all sorts of information weather uh, calendar information there's a radar map there's news stories there's groupon information and over here on android we also have um, all sorts of widgets that can also display all sorts of information but we have a, a horizontally scrolling um, home screen design and by default, it's limited to the number of home screens that you can add stuff to. But you see we have little icons for programs sometimes. We have big, wide weather widgets sometimes. You know, there's an, another different size widget. So widgets can be all sorts of different sizes. And sometimes they'll fit, sometimes they won't. But you have a huge amount of customization options over there on Android. Now when it comes to the program listing, there's your Android version, 
and for Windows Phone 8, you scroll all the way to the bottom and you see the arrow. You don't really, you don't always have to scroll all, all the way to the bottom. You can just swipe it. And here's our program listing. It's a vertical scrolling design. Whereas over here we have a big grid of icons, all with their labels underneath. And you can scroll side to side to get more grids. And then widgets. So everything is here. And you can scroll side to side. The advantage of a vertically scrolling design is that say I'm holding it with one hand, I don't have to move my my finger that much to uh, get to something else. Uh, you know, I can just keep moving a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and now I'm out at the thing that I want. Whereas over here, I really have to, if I swipe it like that, and I want this one up there, I, I really have to reach way up there with my finger. It's a lot of hand movement gets kind of difficult sometimes. Okay, so now let's look at the performance of a few similar apps. So here I have CNN showing up here and CNN there. And let's just uh, try to do it at the same time. And they both started pretty quickly. But it looks like the Windows Phone uh, has loaded everything a little bit faster. And you, you see the difference in design, of course. That's loading. This is already done. All right, let's try another one. How about Facebook? Let's get to that one. Ready? Both of those at the same time. Now, this is a very internet intensive app. And we see Windows Phone seems to have gotten up a little quicker. And both seem pretty smooth scrolling. Let's try one more. How about Twitter? Let's do those at the same time. Here we go. And uh, Android, the Android version, uh, won that that matchup. Now, how about a game? Because those are pretty intensive uh, on the memory. Let's see, where is the one that I want? Here we go. Both are loading. This is going to do Facebook. Don't want that. And the Android version looks to be in the lead. And the Windows Phone version is kind of stuck. Okay, now that we have them both on the same page, uh, we're going to navigate a little bit. Let's do some flicking. You see that Windows Phone has to re-render a little bit sometimes. Whereas the Galaxy Nexus is uh, pretty smooth the whole time. And let's go to one of these pages. Let's see. Both at the same time. When this phone starts quicker, and for some reason this one went to the mobile site, but we're loading more over here. Let's see if you can get rid of these ads. All right, now let's try a video. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, ready? And it looks like Windows Phone went faster. Okay, lastly, let's uh, just compare the stores and see what's in there. So let's go to the Play Store. We'll just launch them at the same time, see what happens. This one came up right away. Nice uh, animation where we, uh, we saw a loading screen over here. So here's a big difference in the design. We have something featured up here at the top. We have different categories, apps, music, magazines, movies and TV, books. Over here we don't have as many categories. We just have apps, games, music, and podcasts. There's no movies and TV. There's no magazines. There's no books. 
and we have a, a very different design. Here's a featured app. Very landscape style layout. So let's go to apps over here. And again, big grid, uh, some ads. And there's a bunch of different apps there. Of course, Android has many, many more thousands of apps. But over here on Windows Phone, we have some interesting features. There's your spotlight. This is a good one, Picks for You, where it chooses apps that you might like based on what your friends like and what is popular. So you can see some of my friends like that one. And we also have that over here, Recommended for You. So Android's Recommended for You is based on Google+, and also what's popular and what you may have downloaded before. The Music Store, again, we see design differences. Nicely, there's a Recommended for You in uh, Google Play, which is something Zune had a long time ago, but they did not implement it in Windows Phone 8 for some reason. And we have nice fe featured music, some free ones. That's pretty nice. So that's a quick little comparison between Android 4.1 and Windows Phone 8. Uh, there's lots of differences. We could go on and on about all the differences, but we just wanted to show you a few different things. Uh, obviously, some have advantages and some have disadvantages. One's better sometimes, one's better the other time. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and that's it for now.